So we were just talking about the Delta variant and how it is spreading across our state as well as around the country. So our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, is here to talk about what we're hearing about the Delta. So let's talk about why we think the Delta variant is spreading in Colorado. It is spreading so quickly, Tom, and it's because it's 60% more contagious than the Alpha variant, which was already 50% more contagious than the original Wuhan strain. So extremely contagious. But to add to that is the fact that the rate of vaccinations has really petered off. But I, I hear about these other states that have lower vaccination rates than Colorado, where they are having trouble as well with some of the, the, the different COVID uh, variants. Why here? We're over 50 percent. Well, we do have a lot of international travel as well. So remember, the, the variant got on a plane from India to the UK and now from the UK to here, or even directly from India. So I think that's one of the reasons some of the smaller cities that have higher rates of, uh, excuse me, lower rates of vaccination don't has, have as much Delta because they don't have as many visitors coming in. We love that Mary Tyler Moore moment. We threw our masks in the air and we thought we were good. Is the mask coming back for vaccinated as well as unvaccinated people because of the Delta variant? Maybe, maybe. So when the CDC originally made their announcement, it was in the absence of the Delta variant here in the United States, really. Mm -hmm. So we need to consider now what the rate of vaccination is and what the Delta variant density is in the area before we decide. So my personal rule of thumb is if I'm going into a, a public space, everybody inside should either be fully vaccinated or I should be sure that the unvaccinated people are wearing masks. And you, you're, you say inside, there's, you know, ball game at Coors Field, there's concerts at Red Rocks. Outside, do you think you're okay without a mask? I do think so for the time being, despite being significantly more contagious, we do know that the virus spreads 19 times less efficiently outside. So I think outside is much safer, but inside, unless you're sure everybody's vaccinated or masked up if they're not, I would put my mask on. How much of that is math and science and how much is, is it our own psychology, each of us, how we feel about it as, as whether or not we're going to wear masks? I think that's huge. I mean, we've learned through this that, that our behavior drives the virus's behavior. So part of it is psychology, part of it is, is math and science. So let's go back to being vaccinated. The booster shot seems to be in many people's minds looming. That, that may be part of what we're going to expect in the fall. Where do you think we stand on the idea of having to re-up, if you will, on vaccine? Yeah, very important discussion to have about the booster shot. So we will know when the booster shot is necessary, when the rate of breakthrough infections goes up, meaning fully vaccinated people are getting infected. That's and the that breakthrough infection. It's fully vaccinated person people getting it COVID. nonetheless. Exactly. And that could happen because their immunity is going down, so the antibodies are waning, or it could happen because the virus is getting smarter, like with the Delta variant. Now, we do have some good data about mixing and matching manufacturers. So we've seen that doing a DNA vaccine like Johnson & Johnson, followed by an RNA vaccine like Pfizer actually boosts your antibodies ninefold. Now, there's some health experts, Tom, that are also saying, and hold on to your seat here, that if you got the Johnson & Johnson, you the should- one shot. Mm -hmm, one shot. You should go and get a second shot as a booster of one of the messenger RNA vaccines, the Pfizer or the Moderna. This is a data-free zone. There's no evidence to back it, but they're saying based on scientific principles, this could be a reasonable thing to do. Are you concerned that, that the only way we'll get data, it, it would be negative data? I mean, that would be the only data we would ultimately get, right? Well, thankfully, there are some trials ongoing looking at this very question, whether we should boost with, you know, the messenger RNA for those individuals that got the DNA vaccine. But the flip side of the argument is knowing we have a, two vaccines that work really well against the Delta, why not go ahead and put those in people's arms? But again, there's a risk every time. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to put you into something that would require a long answer and ask for a short one, but <laughs> are, you, are you very apprehensive about the Delta variant right now here in Extremely. Colorado? Extremely extremely and every time i go into a grocery store or a party in the back of my mind it says delta 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 <laughs> because that is our single biggest threat to getting our lives back to normal we cannot emphasize how serious it is enough sorority girls are mad at you for using it that <laughs> way but <laughs> uh dr paul coley we love having you back with us uh, here in person and it's great to talk to you about this stuff we learn a lot every time thanks